If you love shooting black and white photos, you'll want to check out the new Leica Monochrome Photo Style in the Lumix G9 Mark II. It's gorgeous. But there's a big problem with raw files and photo styles. I'll show you how to fix it. And make sure you stay until the end of this video because I have a bonus tip about a hidden menu in the Lumix G9 Mark II camera. The new Leica Monochrome joins the other four monochrome photo styles in the original G9. I've shot landscapes, street and city scenes, and portraits. I really like the tonal range of this photo style, and in some cases, I tweaked the color of it to make it slightly warmer, which I love. Let me show you how to do that. Now, I like to put my photo styles in my quick menu, but you don't have to do that. Uh, but you can find them on image quality page one. It's very easy to change them. There's the Leica monochrome, and when you scroll down, you can see that you can change contrast, highlight, shadow, and color tone. And I like to set the color tone at minus one. I find it just gives a little warmth to it. And you can also, of course, do it much more than that. And you can see that it does give you a bit of a brown tone. Or you can make it cooler. So you can go all the way to five, and you can see that now the image is much cooler. Now you can also use color filters and back in the day when we shot black and white film we put colored filters over the lens to affect the color of black and white images. So you can see here because I have red tone in my scene a red filter kind of blocks the red and turns the reds into white and uh, green would affect the foliage. Basically, whatever filter you have blocks the resulting color. You can experiment with those too. I almost forgot that you can also add a grain effect. You can do sharpening and noise reduction right within your JPEG file. I'm going to show you something else too. Let me just change the color tone to really cool and let's add some contrast. And let's say you really liked that setup and you want to use that again and again. So if you like it and you want to repeat it quickly without having to go in and modify the photo style, you can hit save and you can add it to your photo styles. So you just go menu set and we're going to overwrite. Yes. Okay. So now when you go into your photo styles, you can see that along the bottom of your menu. There's my photo style one. And that is the photo style that you just set up. So that's a handy way to save your favorite modifications of your photo style. If you've been watching my YouTube videos for a while, you'll know that I am a fan of monochrome photo styles. And not just the Leica one in the new G9 Mark II, but all of them. And in fact, this particular one is L Monochrome D, and it's quite contrasty, as you can see, kind of crunchy. Might work well for uh, urban scenes, really grungy looking, maybe skateboarding and things like that. So if you have a Lumix camera, make sure you experiment with all the uh, monochrome photo styles, not just the new Leica one. By the way, if you're using a mirrorless camera, you'll view and compose your shots in black and white. And when you view your resulting raw files shot with any monochrome photo style on the camera, they're black and white. But when you open those raw files in editing software, they're in color. And that's the big problem. So what happened to your monochrome photos? Let me show you what things look like in Lightroom. Here we are in Adobe Lightroom and I have a bunch of processed in-camera JPEGs. Here's a pair of uh, test shots that I took and one is raw and one is in in-camera JPEG. And you can see here that I set up iDynamic standard in this test shot. Okay, so there's the raw photo and there's the JPEG. And you can see here that the raw files, even though they're shot in black and white, show up in color when they're on your computer. Well, let's try to convert this to make it look like this. What you do is you open it in whatever raw processor you use. And in this case, Lightroom does have color profiles. So I'm going to go down to browse all profiles. And then I go down here to camera matching. And that will bring up the profiles for the Lumix G9 Mark II. And there's Leica Monochrome. If you don't see the photo styles for your particular camera, you may have to update your raw editing software. 
Okay, so that should be simple enough, right? Does it match the original? Here's the JPEG, and here's the RAW. But there's definitely a change in tonal values. So the point is, is if you make a lot of in-camera changes to your file, you may not be able to recreate it. Let's look at another one. Here's the JPEG I shot straight out of the camera, no edits. And here's the raw file. Let's go back to color camera matching and there's our Leica monochrome. Our shadows seem to be a bit more opened up on the JPEG. What about with a portrait? So here's my in-camera JPEG and my raw file. Let's go back down to Leica monochrome and you can see that it's really dramatic. The JPEG has much more open shadows than the RAW file. It's just a bit too dramatic for a senior's portrait, I think. Now here's an image that had the browner color tone applied to it, and here's the RAW file. But you can see that you don't have the brown tone. So you would have to go in and edit this photo to make it have the brown tone that you shot in camera. Here's one more scenario. What about if you shoot in IA mode? So now I'm going to take a photo in Intelligent Auto Mode, IA, and you can see that it's in color. So when I go into my quick menu to try to change my photo style to monochrome, I only get the one choice. I only get plain monochrome. I don't get the Leica monochrome or any of the other ones. So if you're shooting in IA mode, you will not see the Leica monochrome photo style. But here's the good news. If you shot JPEG plus RAW in IA mode, you can get any photo style back when you open the RAW file. If you tweaked your photo style in the camera or used eye dynamic or noise reduction, it may be tricky to replicate some of that with your RAW file. So if you shoot only RAW files, those in-camera edits will be completely lost. Even if you change your RAW file to the monochrome photo style in Lightroom, it may still look different from your in-camera JPEG. If you want to see what the Leica monochrome photo style looks like straight out of the camera, make sure you set your file quality to RAW plus JPEG when doing your tests. There's no noise reduction applied to RAW files either, so you'll have to spend time figuring that out too. And I personally find noise reduction the most time-consuming part of photo editing. And if you're using Lightroom AI noise reduction, on those RAW files, expect to spend a lot of time waiting while the AI is at work. In my tests, that takes two to four minutes each photo, and then you'll have yet another DNG RAW file to store. So here's our JPEG, and here's our RAW file, and I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but there's definitely some noise here. Let me just zoom in a bit more, and I'll just go back to the JPEG. There's the JPEG really enlarged here, and there's the raw file. So you can manually tweak your noise reduction in Lightroom or other software, or you can use the new AI denoise, which will also result in a new DNG file. So it's gonna duplicate your file and denoise it as well. For me, this takes way too long. I don't have the patience and I don't have the time to use this feature on every photo. Just for fun, I'm going to click it and see how long it takes. And I'm gonna start my stopwatch here, go. Okay, so now it's calculating the time. It's not starting the denoise yet, it's just calculating the time. Okay, so for this particular photo, it's going to take two minutes. That's what it's gonna look like, it says. I'm gonna enhance. And now you can see that it is spinning over here and we're almost at the one minute mark. Now it said it would take two minutes, so I will skip the video ahead so you don't have to wait through all of this. Don't you worry. Okay, we're at two minutes. You can see the progress bar on the top left of the screen. Getting closer, watching that blue stripe. Two minutes and 25 seconds. Stopping the clock because it said it was done. There's the JPEG. There's the AI DNG. And there is the raw file. Let's zoom in on all of these. Okay, raw file, JPEG, enhanced, 
noise reduction DNG. Yeah, I think the DNG actually does look better than the JPEG, but I'm really zoomed in. I'm not sure if you'd see that in a print, but that's a topic for another video, isn't it? Yes, of course, there are advantages to shooting RAW plus JPEG. The big one is having a backup color version of your photo. You have greater tonal range of your original image, which gives you exposure insurance, especially if you overexposed your photo. And of course, the ability to choose any white balance setting in case you set it incorrectly. Now, personally, I'm a JPEG shooter 99% of the time. Call me crazy, but I like to let the camera do the work. And that way I spend less time fixing my photos or having to make a hundred decisions when editing raw files. I'm more of a in the moment photographer. With experience, you will learn what situations you can shoot JPEGs and ones where you need the insurance that raw files give you. Now I made some prints from a few of those images just to see how they look. I didn't edit these because I wanted to see how an image straight out of the camera and straight to print would look. And I'm very happy with them. So here's that bonus tip for Lumix G9 Mark II users. Do you have an original G9 or other Lumix camera? Remember this creative control setting on your mode dial? As you can see, it's not on the G9 Mark II. So where are those creative filters? Okay, let me show you how to find those creative filters in the G9 Mark II. So go into your menus, go to image quality page two and go to the bottom where it says filter settings. And in there you can see the filter effect is off and what you wanna do is set it up. And you can see here that you have the eight filters. The original Lumix G9 actually had 22 of these creative filters. So let's just choose, uh, let's choose high key so that we can notice the difference. So you hit set and you'll notice here that there's a grayed out menu, simultaneous recording without filter, because that will give you uh, two versions of the file. And it's grayed out because we are shooting raw plus fine. So raw plus fine, so raw plus JPEG, the effect will be applied to the JPEG and the raw file will have no effect. So you can do it that way, or you can put it to picture quality fine, so JPEG only, go back into that menu, and now you can see that simultaneous record without filter is on. So now we're gonna take a picture, and we're gonna play it back. And let's go display here, and we're gonna see that this is our high key version and this is our standard version. So you can see that you have two versions of this file and two different file numbers as well. So it's kind of like shooting raw, except that you get two JPEGs instead of a raw plus a JPEG with the filter effect. Now, if you use these filters and only shot raw files, you will lose the effect, just like any photo style. Now, if you've been messing around in your photo styles, don't forget to reset everything before you go off and do an important photo shoot. So the key takeaway from all of this is that photo styles, creative filters, sharpening, noise reduction, and even your white balance settings are only applied to your JPEGs, not your RAW files. And if you only shoot RAW, you have to edit every single photo all the time. To learn more about other Lumix monochrome settings I like to use, you can watch this video here. Thanks for watching.